Hey everybody, um, it's been a quite a few months here since I first put up a, a five-stage BRS RODI system. Since then I've incorporated a whole bunch more elements into this system to expand its capabilities uh, in supporting my new 180. And I'd like to share some of these things with you today. Hopefully you'll uh, find some value maybe as a system of, uh, in its entirety or just bits and pieces of it. Um, this has been a, definitely a work in process for me. Um, I've made a few mistakes. I'll uh, point those out, and I've learned from this myself. Um, this is the first time I've attempted to put anything like this together, so it's definitely been a learning experience for me. Um, starting right here is where we've tapped into um, the house water system. I'm on a well system. Um, 230 TDS coming out of the tap. I suspect I have a lot of CO2 because I am definitely had to expand this system to um, the pro di resins and it chews through the anion like you wouldn't believe so i have a cation anion and then a mix bed at the end here and it just eats through the anion but got a booster pump presser switch and then down here i have a couple valves coming off a splitter and what that does is i have one line going into my RO container. If I need to, I can shut that off and override it if I have to do maintenance. Then I have a second line off the splitter and that's going to my ATO tank. So I've got to order a few more uh, clips for the walls or end short. And I'm using a Spectra Pure liquid level controller um, to help manage um, refilling the ATO and avoids TDS creep. So I'll show you how that works in a moment. Um, this thing is pretty beefy. It's very heavy. I'm impressed with the build quality of it. However, um, I'm less than impressed with the lack of any way to mount this via uh, clips, brackets, no there's just nothing. <laughs> they gave you nothing to do that. And then um, this is the little controller box here. Um, the setup is less than elegant, but um, minus one for that, but plus two points for the, the functionality that this thing does provide. So the line comes over and then goes into the side of my ATO. This is a custom ATO by Bashi. Um, I designed this in 3D. Uh, Autodesk Fusion. So what this does is here is a high and low level sensor. So when the low level sensor trips it's going to call for water and when the high level trips it's going to sh deactivate the solenoid. I showed you in the wall earlier. The solenoid is a normally closed, so if it does not have power, it is closed. So if you should ever lose power, you don't have to worry about um, having it call for water. <clears throat> I'd like to point out one mistake I made. You'll see I re-employed my rubber duck from my flow test earlier this month. I misinterpreted, misinterpreted the installation instructions from SpectraPure and I mounted my float switch too high. So I kind of got, got, got it backwards when I was drawing this thing out. Um, they actually mount opposite of what I thought. So if I had done this again, this would probably be about another inch and a half lower. So I've attached a nice rubber duck here. You can see that it was made for exactly this purpose. And it will approximately trip the switch where I want now. You can see here the lower level limit switch is open. So that's two levels of safety. If things ever go south and all that fails, I have an emergency drain that comes out the side. It'll come down to the floor where I'm going to run a barb and some flexible hose to the floor drain. So if everything goes south and the water gets stuck on, I'm just throwing it down the drain and I'm not wrecking my house. So normally I'm going to be dosing caulk washer and also we have a float valve where that's a set another level of protection as well so if the solenoid fails I still have this 
If that fails, we have the drain. I'm going to be using a calc stirrer. So when I when my Tunzi ATO here calls for water, and that's just a standard 3155 Tunzi, it's going to feed the calc stirrer via this line here. This here is for a siphon break. So that way when the saturated calc washer goes down to my sump through the wall, it'll break any siphon that may occur if it does. If I ever need to just dose pure uh, RO water, I can flip this valve, three-way valve here, and that is going to switch my output to right here. This again is for a siphon break. And that again goes to my sump through the wall. So I can easily, with the flip of a valve, switch from calc to RO to off. Now, if I fool the system and I trip the water or the sensor, you can hear it call for water. Now we'll simulate the float switch. And you can see that it's now done. Now I can drop that again. And it's a moment, I think it's a momentary switch. Maybe I'm not using the right terminology. But it doesn't have to remain in the up position. It just has to get tripped one time. And you can hear my pump going over there. And it'll build up pressure and stop momentarily. But you can see, regardless, um, the solenoid is actually closed because we're not getting any water out of here at all right now. Um, we're just waiting for pressure to build up to the point, there it goes, that that pressure switch kicks off. So just as designed. And then in here also, I should mention, there's a float valve as well. So if both lines are closed, that pressure switch will shut off. If I draw water over here, that float valve is going to drop, the line's going to open up, and the water will just go to the RO storage, and my ATO, if full, will not be used at all. Now, I've intentionally let my sump go just a little bit low today for this. I'm going to plug in the Tunzi, and you can see we have a low. And now I'm waiting for, and there it is. You can see it's calling for water here. I switch it. Now you can see we're just dosing straight out of the ATO. And it's done. So that's what we've got. I think one last comment is the only thing I'm not impressed about with regards to this uh, Tunzi is this pump weighs about as much as a feather, so it's not even heavy enough to overcome the tension of the RO tubing. Um, I'm trying to figure out some way to increase the weight of the base so I can stand it on end because you can see in its current orientation it's going to be quite a bit different as to how much water it can drain down versus when it's standing up or on its side. So I've got to figure that out yet. But aside from that, um, I hope you learned a few things here. I know I sure did. I'm going to be getting a calc washer up to speed here this week and see how things go. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. I think I've got a pretty good safe system here. Um, while no system is perfect, um, I've tried to think my way through you know, several disaster plans and keep myself covered because never-ending water limited space we can get into trouble but i think i've got a lot of a lot of depth of protection here so thank you